In our previous videos, we learned about recording our accounting transactions using journals. The general journal is a chronological record of all transactions in the business. But simply recording individual transactions isn't enough. Eventually, these transactions need to be grouped together by their accounts and totaled so that these totals can be reported on the financial reports. That is where a ledger comes in. Where journals are records of transactions organized by date, a ledger is a record of balances grouped by account. The most common ledger is a general ledger. This is a ledger that contains all financial accounts that are needed to prepare the financial statements for the organization. Whenever a transaction is recorded in the general journal, the next step in the accounting cycle is to record each line of that journal entry in the general ledger so that the account balances can be updated. This process of recording into the general ledger is known as posting. Let's look at how the process of posting into the general ledger works. Imagine we have a transaction like this one. The business purchases supplies in cash. The journal entry for that transaction would include a debit to supplies and a credit to cash. Here's an example of what that journal entry would look like. Now let's post this journal entry into the general ledger. In the general ledger, there are separate ledger records for each account, so each line needs to be posted to the ledger for its account separately. Let's start with the debit to supplies. So the first thing we would need to do is go into the general ledger and identify the ledger for supplies. We would begin by recording the date of the transaction from the journal entry into the general ledger. So a lot of posting into a general ledger is simply taking the information we've already created in the journal and copying it into the ledger. So we would start with that date and move it down into the general ledger. The next thing we would do is look for the dollar amount. First we need to identify what column it's in and record it in the same column on the general ledger. So in this case we have a debit of $325 in the supplies account. So that's what we're going to move into the general ledger. Once we've moved that into the general ledger the next step would be to adjust the balance for supplies based on this new transaction. So looking at our balance for the supplies account, we have a debit balance of $2,000. And our transaction also happens to be a debit balance of $325. Anytime both the balance and the new transaction are on the same side, they're both debits or they're both credits, then we would add those together. So where these are both debits, we're going to add them together, and the new balance in our supplies account would be $2,325. Now that the supply side is recorded, let's jump over and record the cash side. So once again, we would go out to our general ledger and locate the ledger for that cash account so that the ledger and the line on the journal entry match. Then we bring the date down into the ledger, copying that from the journal, and then we would also copy the dollar amount. Now in this case, cash has a credit of $325 on the journal entry, so we would record that on the credit side of the ledger for $325. Now we need to update our balance for the cash account. We can see that the cash account has a debit balance of 1496 but our transaction has a credit balance of 325 So we mentioned earlier that when they're both the same side, we would add them together. Opposites subtract. So we are going to subtract the $325 from the $1,496 debit balance because it is opposite of the balance. Subtracted together, that would leave us a balance in cash of $1,171. So, recording into a general ledger is very simple. You first start by identifying the correct ledger, copy the date, and the transaction amounts. The difficult thing is remembering your signs, remembering whether you're adding that transaction to the balance or subtracting it from the balance. Remember that if both sides are the same, we add. If they are opposites, we subtract. When we were posting to the general ledger, you may have noticed the reference fields in both the journal and the ledger. These are special fields that link the general journal and the general ledger together to create an audit trail. An audit trail is a paper or electronic trail that gives a documented history of a transaction. 
Basically, an audit trail allows you to trace the history of a transaction as it travels through the entire accounting cycle, from when it first entered as a source document, to the general journal, onto the general ledger, and finally landing on the financial statements. Having these links between each part of the accounting cycle ensures that the transaction doesn't get lost partway through recording, and helps find and correct these kinds of mistakes when they occur. There are many different ways that an audit trail can connect these different stages of a transaction's life cycle. When a journal and a ledger are kept on paper, the reference columns in each are how an audit trail is often tracked. When posting a transaction from a general journal to the general ledger, you can create a connection back to the general journal by identifying the page that that transaction was located on and recording that in the reference field in the general ledger. This way, if you're on the general ledger and need to go back and look at what the original journal entry was to understand that transaction better, you'll know that you can find it on the date, May 4th, on page 1 of the general journal. And oftentimes this is abbreviated as J1 or GJ1. Now that links the general ledger back to the general journal, but what if you're on the general journal page and want to know where this was posted or if this transaction was ever posted in a general ledger? For that reference field, we would take the account number on the general ledger and record that in the reference field for the general journal. That way you know that if you ever want to go and find where in the general journal this was posted, it was posted on May 4th, in account number 105, and you can go to that general ledger and find it. So by including the reference in both locations, it ties these two sheets of paper together and allows you to trace backwards or forwards in the life cycle of the transaction, depending on what level of detail and information you're looking for. Another handy thing with the reference field is by marking the reference in the general journal, it also gives us kind of a check the box to let us know that that line has been posted. And then we don't accidentally forget to post that line later on. Or if we do, we can recognize because of the reference field that it wasn't posted and go back and fix that quickly and easily. In today's digital world, most accounting records are now kept in computer software. These accounting programs often automate the tracking of transactions and manage audit trail reporting for you. So, the need for these reference columns isn't as great now as it used to be. Either way, whether on paper, like our example, or tracked in a computer system, the audit trail is an important part of managing accounting records and ensuring their accuracy. To learn more about the general ledger and other accounting topics, check out more of my videos on YouTube or visit ToriNorman.com.